Uh, hey yo, hey all. Um, hello nobody. We'll cover all our bases. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. We're on uh, we're on day seven. This is it. We're on the final day. I put on the police uniform. I'm looking terrific. Ouch, that leg hurts. Maybe if I don't run, it'll be okay. Can you imagine if the solution is just to like not sprint everywhere for the rest of the game. Kim, get out of my way. Looks like she left something on the table. Let's pick it up. Next to the stack of bills, you see a note. A few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting, just as the writer was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry. I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. Aw, we're still getting gifts. A gift. What could this gift be? I am not drawing my gun yet. But I don't like gifts. Oh. You just need to be more open. Seems like she left in a hurry. It's hardly surprising. All right, Kim. Let's go in the bathroom. See if there's uh, anything in here that the I can take. The medicine cabinet is empty. Not even a toothbrush. Shit. Pity. Just kind of hoping the gift would be in here. I always took you for more of a drunk than a chemical abuser, Lieutenant Hefreiter. Should we go? I'm fine. Maybe I'm just curious. Kim? So judgmental. <gasps> it's a rope, a red thread made of nylon. It leads out to or leads out of the room and onto the roof. Anything new with the window? You see the same This is ballistics. She's left a trajectory for us. Ooh. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside, A prime, to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez, B prime, B double prime, and B triple prime. Where does the thread lead? Oh, is it going to be A quadruple prime? It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime. Oh, B triple prime. It's the other island that I was theorizing earlier that I couldn't get to. The island in the bay. Is she trying to tell us the shot came from the islet? Unless she thinks the perpetrator was turning on the ring antenna. It is where the thread seems to point. This is also a location we have yet to rule out. So it is. For a second he seems tired. You seem unenthusiastic. I just haven't gotten a lot of sleep these past few days. He doesn't really believe this will yield anything. Maybe we need to go to the island. <sighs> he is trying to justify it to himself. What else do we what else are we gonna do, Kim? The lead is flimsy. You might as well go around Martinez looking under every rock and talking to every person. But what else is there? I'm going to the island, are you in? Of course, of course. I mean how do we get there? Joyce Messier had a sloop, but she's gone. Lillian, the net picker, she's tarring her boat. Ah, yes, of course. The village. Let's go. Okay. Let's step back out onto the roof, see if anything's going on out here. Let's check my journal, see if uh, all my quests have failed. Still got a bunch of quests. Um, we're just going to abandon everything else. If it's not important, who cares, you know? The thread is tied to the antenna. So it was B triple prime. Or it could be B triple prime. Because we couldn't get to that islet. Yeah, I remember when it popped up and it said, hey, we can go to that island. I didn't think we could be there. But it looks like we are. We will be there soon. Let's talk to Gart. Gart, how are you doing? Oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. I did. Thank you. Big improvement. You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. Defended maybe putting it a bit generously, though. I had a great view of you doing nothing to stop those psychopaths. Then I crawled and started. Hey, I dodged. Bullet started flying. Anyway. He really wants you to realize that he was also on the balcony looking by, in the danger zone, so to say. 
I wish you a quick recovery. Also, you and your partner are staying here free now. This establishment supports cops. The stay is free, whether drinks or not. It just felt I needed to specify that. All right, where did everyone go? Oh, you know, people don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. Are Lena and Moral still in town? Ah, them. Nice people, but no. Lena said they were going back to Jamrock. I saw them pass by outside. This was before the fight started. I'm glad she got out of here before all that. Bullets flying and stuff. People inside were quite terrified, you know. I had to take action and step outside, too. Okay, yes. That was for the best. Yes, you know. And I went outside and took care of it. Everybody calmed down. Felt like the right thing to do. He's almost completely forgotten when this began. But we weren't done looking for the phasmid. I mean, you're a detective. Perhaps you can track them down. Shouldn't be that hard. Exactly. But only in due time. Crypto business is not a priority right now. Yeah, we gotta go check on B Triple Prime. You'll see her again one day. You know it. Things went like they did for a reason. Happened to the man with the sunglasses. I don't remember everyone who comes here. And many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. Okay, so I have to mention, when it happened, you were right out there on the balcony. Yeah, I was. <clears throat> That's because I'm a bad ass. It really took courage. Don't pick at him. Just nod stoically. He nods back at you even more stoically. Just two bad ass men nodding. Ho, 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 ho. Make that three. There we go. The lieutenant is nodding too. Hands crossed. That's how you get it done. All right, thank you. No problem. Goodbye. All right. Yep. Oh, these poor two. These poor two gentlemen. Hey, man. See you approach. The bruised man clenches his fists. Oh, it's you. Didn't think we'd see you walking anytime soon. Elaine, look. It's the cowardly cop. It's me, the cab of the cop. Huh? What? Our condolences for your loss. Uh, I'm gonna. Is he okay? Point to Elaine. Does he look like he's okay? Oh, uh, clearly not. But I thought I'd ask. He does not. His unshaven face is almost grey, and he reeks of piss, sweat, and booze. While still alive, he has abandoned his own body to decomposition. Yeah, I'm just supposed that was a dumb question. No shit, Marlon. Bye. Yeah, you too. It's a rough world out there. It's not easy being a cop. We were too hard on you. Both of you. We shouldn't have fucked with you like we did. You got between us and a lot of bullets in that fight. Matinees owes you one. That's kind of you to say. Take care of your friend, okay? I will. You take care of yours. A sharp pain shoots up your side and into your stomach. You must not look too good. Luckily, it passes. Ah, oh, my poor leg. Those poor two gentlemen. On George Serai de Ritor Prez. Not Prez. Predatoire. Hmm. Do something for me. <laughs> That's all I got from that. Thank you, high the school French. Has been painted over the traces of the One day I will return to your side. Got it. Smells of blood and heavy fuel. Oh, pray to toi. Got it. This was Cindy the Skull. Looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words for a masterpiece. The lieutenant crouches, touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it. Yes. This is still fresh. It wasn't here yesterday. I smell heavy fuel oil. And blood. Some of it is even yours. Heavy fuel oil. Isn't that flammable? What are you trying to imply? Fingers? You could buy some smokes. Light up a ciggy and throw it in there. You know, just to see what happens. See if it's flammable. <laughs> no way that's something I can do. No way. On today's episode of Mythbusters, 
I'm gonna find out what happens if you throw a cigarette on that. Can you buy cigarettes here? I don't remember. We're about to find out. We're gonna buy some more health items, because I'm running low. I'm not running super low, I'm just worried that I'll run out. Come on. A small cabinet on the wall is Okay, here. I hope to sink the Okay, here. I hope to sink the Okay, here. I hope to Okay, here. I hope to sink the teeth to make sure Okay, here. I hope to sink Okay, we are stocked up on medical supplies. Um, is this about the questions again? Because uh. I don't really know any. A colorful again, I'm obliged to inform you that both uh, alcohol and cigarettes Give me extra cigarettes. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. I don't have to collect bottles no more. I still have $100. I'd like to thank the uh, the light bending man for that. Let's go down here and see if uh, the statues change at all. Or sculpture. I probably won't finish this quest line, but... um. It'd be nice to see this fully realized. Whoa, it really did come together, didn't it? Look at that. The scaffolding around the old monument has been taken down. Oh In its my place, gosh. The spoils of your investment. Numerous rods and ropes still hold the original reassemblage in place. This is fantastic. I'm going to reflect on the reconceptualization. An apricot scepter shines party bright across the monument. Glitter balls dangle like severed heads below the eternal king of disco. It is unmistakably a vision of you in your prime. A killer on the performance floor. Icon for all. This is fantastic. Doesn't feel right to party now, does it? Are you at least happy with it? Happy isn't the word. You can be satisfied Oops. with the job well done. But the current mood doesn't invite any analogs to joy. Well, we all need to pick me up, but I'm glad to provide. As entertainer, style leader, superstar law officer of the world. Actually, it's a job well done. Any happiness should be reserved for now. He nods in respectful agreement. That's a good answer. Then closes his eyes for half a beat. When he opens them, it's clear he has something to say to you. Detective, I have a few questions, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. He nods. Eyes still on the megastar above, his face tinged by the citrus beams warming the cold air. Why did you do it? The free market demands it. He nods. The roundabout is quiet, almost eerily so, in the rain. Drops fall around the apricot scepter and bounce off the glitter balls. Yet the noble king of disco still hunts unperturbed for the next funky beat. Perhaps the free market does work in mysterious ways. At least Idiot Doom Spiral has made you look like the cool cat you are. That's fucking wicked. And was it all worth it? Hundred percent worth it. Do it all over again, but this time with more profit. Oh no 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 hold up what are you talking about? Let's get some more information about what Kim thinks about this. You managed to get a quite a fortune kicked off by underpaying a young artist. You had to pay her so little. Otherwise, you wouldn't have made any profit. And if you don't make a profit, you don't have money to invest. The lieutenant speaks as if you're rich. A common misconception, especially if you count the tax. No, we've got a long way to go before you can feel financially comfortable. The hustle never stops. Hey, it's the system. I did my best to support artists, employ people, get back to the community, even told Idiot Doom Spiral to stop drinking. Ah, yes. Spoken like a true philanthropist. All right, shall we? We still have some things left to do before we can go home. Okay, let me have one more look at the monument. Sure. Whenever you're ready. The disco dancer towers above. Damn straight. Net worthy individual. Numerous rods and ropes still hold the original reassemblage in place. Every day I'm hustling. Nice. Look at me go. I'm so brilliant. Alright, let's light these words on fire. Let's, let's get done uh, getting sentimental. Got a rare achievement. I'm feeling great.
I have a pack of smokes. Let's do it. The graffiti. This was Cindy the Sky. Step back, Lieutenant. The fuel oil catches fire immediately. Nice. With a low hiss. A bright orange flash across the surface of the lettering. Rain turns the vapor above the burning message, mingling with the black smoke. This is it. This is the end of the game right here. I'm gonna say it. Disco Elysium. The lieutenant has taken a small step back. He looks at your face illuminated by the flames and nods silently. Then the fire falters. Let's go to that island. <laughs> Slowly, the flames subside, the fuel burning out. The air still smells of mazout and springtime. Kim, that was impressive, and you know it. And I said yes. the words. Okay. Just a man in a sandwich. Can I have some of it? Yummy, yummy. Are these guys still down here playing uh, racket, croquet, throw ball? Nope. They're gone, too. Damn. kind of wanted to play. All right, let's see if we can fast travel to the village. I don't want to walk over there. Fisherman Shacks. Joyce is gone, so bye. Get a lowdown on reality. Hello, we need a boat. You can provide. Help me. Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. You're not limping. You're you. <laughs> she sounds almost disappointed with you. Reprimanding you for falling and hurting your knee. Seem angry. Why? Look at you. You can barely walk. I got shot in the foot. It was pretty badass. Who would have liked it? Ah, it's nothing. Is this from the shooting in town? We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint Guilaine. It's nothing to be worried about, madame. You didn't only get shot. I have a question for you. Of course. Can I help you with something? We need to get to that island. That won't be a problem. It's wind still and the tar just dried. We've got two days of relative sunshine ahead. Two days of sunshine? I just got a bacterial infection. <laughs> Fuck. Can we borrow your boat? If you promise to bring it back. And no scraping the hull. I just got it nice and yellow. And no drinking on the boat. And no joyriding either. Of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Hi. Nod. The crow's feet disappear from the corners of her eyes. Thanks. She smiles at you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll use your skiff to get there then. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? Be seeing ya. Let's do it. Let's get on the boat. Let's get on the boat, Kim. We're ready. Let's go to the island. The islet. The point. The skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle, and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? I have a hundred dollars and a lot of side missions to do. Don't care. Let's go. Don't need nothing else. Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts? Yep. Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. You take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the boombox. What? Well, what? How else do we plast? <laughs> oh, my God. I was reading too far ahead, and I started laughing. What's what? How else do we blast Sad FM on our way to the island? Fine. Let's blast Sad FM, then. Sad FM is a radio station specializing in sad, slow rock songs. You seem to know its frequency by art. Let's get in and ride to the island. Let's make sure no sad songs play so I don't have to mute the, uh, the audio. Okay, so I've muted it just in case for copyright reasons. So instead, I'm going to tell you a story. This is a story of the ugly barnacle. He was so ugly. 
that everyone died. His ancient reptilian brain got the best of him. And wouldn't you believe it? That barnacle was me, the end. I bet you like that story, because I like that story too. If you don't like that story, come back and talk to me another day. Hello, sir. Is that a circle wave? No, ma'am. That is not a circle wave. This song is really sad. It's like, uh, uh, you know. Listen to some Pink Floyd. Get your uh, King Gizzard and the Wizard Dizzard. Lizzy Dizzies. Get that going on for you. I'm pretty sure we can arrange. The boat Here we are. comes to a slow stop. The lieutenant turns the engine off. Then there's silence. Time to find the shooter. Let's go. Let's go. This is it. I got a skill point and everything. Sam Lake ain't afraid of no police, dog. Makeshift bridge. The bombs are powerful, powerful enough to break the foundation. Let's get on up here. Let's see what's going on. Tension, inflammable. Uh oh. Some for some fuel is leaked out of the barrel. Black, viscous. You know what that means? Don't light any cigarettes. People have a really weird idea of what inflammable actually means. They're like, oh, that means you can't light it on fire. No, that means very. Inflammable means flammable. Don't do it. Don't be that guy. Let's walk inside. Ooh, okay, here we go. This was once an armament rest. Twin cannons were attached here. Medium distance, large caliber. Careful, these stairs have collapsed. Let's go back up. <laughs> Dishes stained with sauce and fire. Survivor's kitchen. Let me check. Did we unlock a new area on the map? Oh, yeah. The map grows bigger. Books. Mostly fantastic and historical fiction. A bed? There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner. Resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn-out caracal blanket. Someone has been squatting here. The linen is fresh. Recently washed. How recently? A flash of pain interrupts you, making you wince instead of letting the words out. You know, officer, you can rest here if you are feeling tired. I will keep watch. You could use some rest for what's ahead. Hey, no time for rest yes, now. Yes, any time. If you need a rest later, it's okay by me. You don't have to be a hero. Got it, but let's explore this room a little bit. See candles planted on a broken rangefinder. Books and magazines. Sift through them. Most are soft covers. Serialized fantastique and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic Animal Adventures. Popular depictions of man versus nature. By amateur naturalist T and T Harpin, husband and wife, widely read by people from all walks of life. Who doesn't like nature? Who doesn't want to survive? Among what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, you find a magazine cathodique for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp, light erotica, an international thriller about circuit benders. Someone's made themselves a home. Okay, let's use our conceptualization. Uh, does anything stand out as unusual? Oh yes, under the bed, there is a rather extensive collection of critical theory. That is, dour, life non-affirming left-wing literature published by small imprints such as Abattoir Firm and Uzia. It's not exactly like reading. Look, Kim, downbeat dribble for people who can't get shit done. Uzia. I agree. Humanitarian sciences. It stands out. Not a lot of critical theory around in Havashul West. Your incendiary remark has failed to provoke him. Wasn't there some in the communist student's room? A student in the apartment building seemed to have some as well. Well, yes. That one student did. The little books seem inconsequential next to the big pile of frivolous entertainment covering Critical them. theory books. What do you think this means? Whoever has lived here, they have some education. And a certain set of interests. Interesting. Let's look around a little bit more. Maybe we'll sleep. Fallen arrow, we're sure. Is that me? 
It's a little odd. Looks like me. You see a small metal door nested inside. It's on the other the side. Room. Another part of the island, probably. The lock looks like it could still be usable. How do we open this? Maybe this is one of the doors we don't open. Okay. He's right. It would be better to open its big brother. A powerful engine hangs under the ceiling. It must control the blast door. I find us opening it highly unlikely. All right. I retract my statement. It was naive. Let's look around and get it open. So we have 10, to 10 tons. Rust must peel it off. Okay. Stand here and look at it. An old cylindrical generator is nested above the ammo lift with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall to your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. It's cold now, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Tap on the side. A hollow ring. The canister is empty. Dust falls from the generator and down into the ammo lift. Where did these wires lead? Downstairs, somewhere. What kind of generator is this? Liquid carbon. I would imagine it takes mazout. The kind that's favored by vagrants and fuel thieves. It's been a long winter, long and cold. If anyone stayed here, they'd need a generator. What does this mean, a generator here? I don't know. I'm not a philosopher. Ah, that's where I step in. That is his idea of a joke. I am. This generator provides the universe I am. This generator proves the universe is material. Kick it. <laughs> nice. He nods approvingly. He even smiles. I meant, why is it here? Someone with basic electrical skills has restored it in order to keep the room warm. The wind outside picks up suddenly with a faint howl. Hmm. Curtains. All right, let's rest here. The greasy oak. The offer still stands. Okay. A quick save just in case. The greasy. The offer still stands. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close until you feel yourself standing up in the darkness right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. It is evening. Do be evening, though. Sleep. I'm using the right stick to move around. So let's use the left stick. Interesting. No HUD. The lieutenant is no longer here. Go outside to the beach. Isn't it over here? Hello? What is going on? Isn't that where I came in from over here? Do I have to go to the big door? Feels strange somehow. You can't get in. Yeah, I can't get out apparently. Uh, 
Okay, I have legit reloaded my game. I spent tw Listen to me. I spent 20 minutes looking around. Could not get out. Could not get out. Could not for the life of me figure out how to get out. So we're... um. Wait a minute. Can I walk around this? Okay, so I spent 20 minutes walking around not realizing that I could walk down under here. I might be stupid. This hatch is jammed shut. I might be stupid. Ooh, loose floorboard. Well, at least I made a quick save. We'll investigate and then... Green paint flicks off the What is this then? The console of an antique computation device. The generator upstairs with wires coming out. They terminate here. Could this open the blast door? Possibly. Urgence, ouvert, allumé, radio diffusé. It sounds like this device was used to control the electronics here. Maybe it still does. Okay. This device was used to control the electronics in the room. It could open doors, control lights, function as a radio computer. I'm gonna turn it on. We need to restore power. We should Fine, run Kim. outside. There are barrels all over. Maybe one of them still has something in it. The boat engine. <gasps> or we could get some from the boat engine. No, 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 no. We'll the console again. looks on as you talk. Nothing happens. The dial slides under the Got it. Nothing happens. Silently, you make out defunct stations on the UKV frequency. The words, Feld Insula, are written on the band. Okay, let's continue. An idea lights up in your head. Maybe we could contact sooner the programmer lady. She could open the door for us remotely. This is an air gap system of air, I think they call it. That won't work. Are you sure? No, I'm not. But it would not be very good military technology if programmer ladies could control it remotely. Also, it's ancient, incompatible. Fine, we'll go outside. A firing slit you can't see inside. Must have been a direct hit to take out such a huge chunk. The descent sound of cargo ships, signal horns, echo on the water. I bet they do. The ice cracks under your feet. Be careful not to fall through. I agree. Let's go back. <gasps> A chain. My controls have stopped working. Oh, my controller has died. Wow, I have to plug it in. How embarrassing. Okay, listen in real time as I grab the cord to my controller and plug it in. There we go. Now it's charging. That was embarrassing. The winch is broken. Rust is eaten. What remains of the chain? A strange feeling looking at the water. Maybe you should just wander off into the sea. Leave it all and walk in. But it's cold. Yes, cold and still. But love is warm like the inside of her mouth. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Shake my head. Okay, nothing else over here. My brain's like, hey, dude, um, you like Blue October? Well, I got the I got the plot for you. The pain in your pelvis makes you wince. Then you continue. Maybe it's a bad idea not to nap. Inside of the fortress, you make out the console and the blast door. Okay. A shed. There's some stuff in here. That's a gas canister. A weathered artillery map showing coordinates in the Bay of Revachol. An old medicine cabinet newly stocked with dro uh, drumming. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab, only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits like two eyes in the wall. Is this where the gun was fired? B triple prime. Yeah. This looks like a good place to shoot from. 
Inspect the wall. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you. Like a little window. Okay. And touch the concrete first. Quite old and grimy from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. Okay, look through the hole in the concrete. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. A small piece of Martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting. One kilometer across the water, the ruins look familiar. On the left? A towering skyscraper, its top floors shaved off by artillery fire, capeside apartments. Rue de Saint Gislain, 33A and 33B. On the right? The red chimney and collapsed back of the four story tenement in front of the whirling in rags. Rue de Saint Gislain, 10. The doomed commercial area. And in between the two? The box shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. Its sloped roof, a tiny fleck of light catches your eye on the rooftop, sunlight reflecting off the upstairs window of Clasia's room. Motherfucker. What does that mean? Do you have line of sight to the window? Yeah, there's an opening between 33A and 10. I can see to the roof. I can see it. Through the scope of a rifle, the shooter would be prone, lying on a mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. I think we have it. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. He pats you on the back. Three small pats in a row. Affirmative. Oh, better late than ever. Nothing pointed here. Many leads pointed elsewhere. Six people are dead. We could have prevented it. Don't beat yourself up, officer. We did not put guns in their hands or get them drunk. We will make up for it. Here. I feel it. Could the shooter still be here? Where? On this island. He does not answer. Just nods. With his back hunched, he looks around once more and says... He didn't like the thought of the killer still being on this island. We should move now. Yeah, he's, he's fucking... He's... Not liking it. Let's inspect the mattress. A single person mattress. Modern. Civilian use. Brand name. Marjorie. There's a fuel stain on the cover along with cigarette burns. A good place to hide. Cozy. Relatively safe from the rain. Okay. Gas can. Got it. Let's go power that machine. That is crazy. Yeah, we should move now. He's like, either they're going to get away or I don't want to be here when he figures out that we're here. I love the way that Lieutenant Ear Freighter... Walks with his gun, swinging it boisterously. All right, all right, here we go. Fuel it up, fuel it up. The console is powered off and covered it. Oh, where do we put the fuel? Um. This old cylindrical fuel generator. Fuel under the tank. Wait, the lieutenant assists yep, you. Yep, yep. Holding the canister up. To the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown viscous fluid pours out and the room fills with a chemical smell. Nice, nice. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. Pull the rope. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old war horse before settling down to a rattle. That should do it. Okay, fun fuel for the generator. Do I sleep in the bed? I guess I can retry it now that I know the uh the greasy I can go outside. The mattress lies in the corner. The offer still stood. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there in the dark corner. The blank you feel yourself standing. Okay, I was just skipping that because we've already been through right this. I'm talking over sleep. you. Like, I was concerned with going back. It says go outside, right? I was concerned with going back the way we came. Not to the next area. 
Yep. You should go outside. You got it. I don't like that the music stopped. That's a little that's a little eerie, don't you think? Sorry, one second. Hmm. Okay. Now we can head outside. You think Kim, uh, Kim's waiting for me out here? Hey, the music came back. Hello. Go down to the chain. There's something there. You got it. Oops, let's not fall in the water. Now do it. Walk into the water. Um, is that a good idea? Um, um, whoa. You see her footprints on the water. Whoa, my Jesus. Who are... Is this game testing my sanity right now? Oh my God, that picture scared the piss out of me. And the welfare state turns around. Golly. She has an airship airbag. In her hand, she seems to be in a hurry. How big of a hurry is she in? Where she needs to just scare the fucking piss out of me. Okay, don't say you need to talk right away. Melt the ice first. This way, you're already talking. Uh. Hey. 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 That's all I get. I mean, hey to you too. I'm sorry, how are you doing? I'm doing really good, actually. Both professionally and romantically. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. Well, how are you doing, Harry? I'm not doing very well. well. Don't say that. I know this positive thing sounds stupid to you, Harry, but it works. We all have an obligation to be happy. You too. And you will be. Now. Where are you going? I'm going to Marova. To live there, in Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. What's in the bag? Just my scepter. My globe crucigere. A spare silk gown. A toothbrush. Travel documents. The crown of immortality. Crown of immortality? Aren't you already wearing one? Oh, this. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light, manna, and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say, then over her shoulder. Anyway. Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive epic showdown. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Marova. Really, we don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us. Our love. Our unborn daughters. It's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Ravishol and you. And you have to be alone. In hell, forever. That's just the way it is. Oh God, whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try now. But that's not a very good way for things to be. It's not, but... But what? Tell me there's something good. I don't know why I said but. There is no but. That's it? That's it, yes. We've talked about it a million times. You will get over it. Just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. Where in hell?
You're right. I don't even remember who you are anymore. Haha. -ha. See? It just takes some time. For you, it will take something like 20 years, maybe. It was hard for me, too. I used to think I couldn't live without you. But I can. 20 years, it's so much time. Yes. It only took me one year, maybe two. Phew. Doesn't have to be like this. Maybe we could try again. No, Harry. We can't. Why? We already tried again, and it didn't work. <sighs> is that how it is now? We should just try all good things twice, and then give up. By that logic. What went wrong? When we tried again? I can do it better. I don't know. Please. Okay, I have other questions for you now. I can't answer your other questions, Harry. Not anymore. I have to go. I bought you this figurine of a headless fawn rider. I don't want it. It looks expensive. I don't want it. I thought you liked figurines. I thought the figurines were, were for getting you back. That's not what figurines do, Harry. But then the figurines don't do anything. She looks at the headless fawn rider between your fingers and doesn't know what to say. The figurines don't do anything, anything at all. But I thought the historic figure she had. She liked war games and figurines? Yes, I thought it would be good. A form of communication where words are found. Yes. It was a good idea. But she felt obliged by the headless Oh fire. my gosh, am I supposed to find the return. specific item? Things she no longer wants to give you. So she refused. That's how it goes. Your figurine rider idea was naive. What about dice? I had some custom dice made in this place. A doomed commercial area. Harry, I don't want things. I want to go to the aerodrome. Okay, I won't give you things then. I didn't ask for things. It's too late to give me anything. I would have liked the headless form. They do nothing. Back then. That was fucking sad. Thanks, achievement. By the way, I'm making mad paper now. My net worth is insane. It's not about paper, Harry. Or anything like that. Like she's heard it before. A million times. It's about taking care of yourself. Life is not a competition. Wrong. It is a competition. I'm going to win. You're right, it's all fucking shit. No, it's not. I'm glad you're finally taking care of yourself financially. I really am, but you need to do it for yourself. Not me. I don't need it. I need to run, run, run to the aerodrome. You failed. This failed. The hostile takeover. The dawn raid. Paper made out of broken, twisted trees. You're just insane. Insane and gone. Even six billion won't fix you if she's not there. I'm going to say don't go because I was told not to do that. So we're not going to go down that path. Don't go. No, don't say it. Don't beg. It will only make her go. It's all I have left. Please. I have to, Harry. Really, I've already missed the 830. I'm gonna go now. I was wrong. You don't have power over her anymore. You shouldn't have said that. I am wrong about everything. You should go on without me. The authority says you have sworn a holy oath, Harry. She she herself begged you to not let her go. Wait, can we sit down? Or can we sit down and have coffee first? There's a cafeteria on the corner. No. That would only be painful and dull. At the aerodrome, life, love, and laughter are waiting for me. At the cafeteria, dust, hell, and tragic comedy. But I swore I wouldn't let you go. You told me. You asked me to be this way. That was someone else. 
I betrayed her, overwrote her, and I'm happier for it. And I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 1020 flight. Will we ever see, see each other again? I won't see you, but you will see me. How can that be? Oh, Harry, this is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? A year? Two? Five years ago? How will I see you again then? Right here, tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. And Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. I'm suffocatingly beautiful and young. And I smell of tutti fruity chewing gum. Like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness. After leaving you the first time, so long ago. But this is intolerably bad. Oh yes, this is real darkness. It's not death or war or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow. That's it? Dolores is just going to leave me just like that. The biggest innocence. Wow, that was the, that was a dream, wasn't it? You're up quick. How was your sleep? Let's solve the fucking case. Are you sure you're okay? You thrashed around and you bolted up, half covered in blood from your wound. My sleep was deep and invigorating. Of course. I was just thinking maybe you've torn your stitches. Are you ready to move on? <laughs> just spit out the blood and get back to work. You're badass like that. You're badass like that. Okay. We gotta get this shit done. <laughs> <laughs> that was bitter, bittersweet. A dim golden glow animates the console. Faint, like a ghost light. Eugène Auvers reads one dial key. Allume reads another. It's on. Turn. Automatic boot. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. Uh-oh, here we go. Do it after you. What's there? I don't know. What if we get to another fight? Don't worry. I have a gun. <laughs> I also have a gun. I know. It was not easy to acquire. Funny. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's see what's beyond the door. Let's get it, Kim. Small white flowers blossom all around you. A rubber dinghy, it's deflated, broken. Do you see that? Do you see that man right there with the rifle? Freeze, put your hands up. trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle he gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth 
then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. Nice gun you got there. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. Is that a Belmagraf? It's a Triangong 446. Southeast Samaran made. Exotic. Must be defunct too. No modern rifle manufacturer of that name springs to mind. A Samaran rifle? How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao commune. Military aid. The Sinyao commune? You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk wiped from the ball. His gaze turns inwards. He's right. Almost no one remembers there was a third metastasis of the World Revolution in the Safari Empire, extinguished in 06. It's not white from the board. I remember it. They wouldn't like hearing their name in your mouth. Damn, dog. Did you close the blast door? I did. And you opened it. How? How did you do uh, I feel the generator. Then use the console. I should have. Burn that console down. How did you know I was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music. Playing on the water. I told you we shouldn't play sad FM. But, <laughs> but you didn't say that, Kim. I did. We have entered a world where he said you shouldn't. It is the only world. That is fucking hilarious, Rhetoric. I'm gonna say nothing. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. Hit gyrating mental illness music. Um, I'm with the police. You can keep the gun. But keep it down. Not one move. No. Put it down now, sir. Or you're gonna blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness. What did you like say? Song. The future teaches you to be alone. The present. Let him say it. The present to be afraid and cold. I'm going to pick up the gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. Inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing. Burnt into the wood. Triangong, 4.46 millimeter, made in Sinyao. I'm gonna stow it away. Who cares? The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against him to get a confession. In time. Who are you? My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross, political commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my term of surrender. His eyes turn to the reeds again, dead and dull. The Commune of Revachol? Do you mean the ICM? Your uh, holdover from the... From the Insul Indian Citizens Militia. The Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07. Trained in the Ecole de Contrôle Orion. And consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. 
still armed, and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. You've been on this island for 43 years? No. <laughs> I've been on other islands, too. No, I just like to think he's been on this one, okay? Fuck. All right. I was in a resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was... 22 years ago. Again, you've been hiding here for 43 years? 43 years and 10 months. That's steadfast. It's not how a human being should live. But I had to. I couldn't just forget. I couldn't just forget what I saw. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. Always waiting. Always. For what? For her to return. Her who? Girl child revolution. I come from there. Point to the mainland. I can assure you that is not what the people are planning. I am not a fool. I know. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind. The historic opportunity for our revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore. However hard I try. Whatever I do. What has he done? Perhaps a confession would lighten the load. What have you done then? Yes, what? To get things going again? Fan the flame? There is no flame to fan. There is nothing left of the world, of our dreams. You said you deserted your unit. I was just 16 years old. 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> and of courage, too. Lapse of faith. You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took. For what? For reaction to take hold. It wasn't reaction, you were just afraid. It's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really. Not naked. Hmm. It's impossible not to be afraid. And this was when? May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like... Like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. Dark magic. The combined might of international capital. All at once, all the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. Huddled on the floor, the artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon, but I knew. I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. A terrible shame, still within him. The lobes of his ears are red with it. The shame and smallness of what he became. You didn't go to the map room? No. I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland, in the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened at the ordinance all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. <laughs> Airships. I climbed out into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. 
I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too, shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels, or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Seen what? The mask of humanity fall from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone, everything you love, all the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off just for one second to do the deed. And then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. You see the fear and power in its eyes. Then you know. What? That the bourgeois are not human. Oh, that's... I've always suspected the same. Now is not the time, Lieutenant Yefreto. I had to. All right, fine. I had to fight it. It's not rile Could people not up. Stop anymore. Hey, I'm on Do Not Disturb Xbox. I don't want to see people come online. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna double check that setting. I'm gonna pause it real quick. I was not. I was appearing offline because I hit the wrong button. Okay. What is this place? This island? It's not an island. What? It's a defensive fortification Blatt. of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. Ah, you defender. Uh, Dwight is right. It's not an island, right? <laughs> What's it used for? Actually, you know what? Fuck you. Understood. Don't care. Kim said not to rile you up. I'm not riling you up. Mm -hmm. um, how, how have you survived all this time? How does anyone survive? I steal. Now hold on there. That's a choice. You could have become self-employed. Create the system. You're insane and grotesque. Ow. Everyone steals. Vegetables. Supplies. It's the life of a dog. <coughs> How is your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. He does seem frail. Good for his age. More like 75 than 65. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. DRCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. I need to die. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. This is a serious situation. You need to be looked over and we can do it. There's nothing to look over. The triage is in and it's black. Administer morphine. Moribund. We have Dramine and other opioid-based painkillers. You must be in pain. I have been running out of that stuff. Thank you for clearing that up. He looks at you, his face parched from the sun and the wind. There's a wince of pain in there somewhere. How have you concealed yourself all these years? It was hard in the Thames. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped. And they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But <clears throat> Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsoff coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequency's dead. How did you get between here and the mainland? 
at night. I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too. They'd started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... He falls silent, his gaze fixed on the shacks huddled together across the water. How about the weapons cache under St. Gislaine 22B? In the basement, have you been there? So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elmer Graves, right? They were damaged beyond use. I know. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. I'm out scrounging on others. Those my graves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. Why don't you just... Hmm, no, actually. There's a small bunker under the failed building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Killed themselves. A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. Tell me another thing. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorways rising above it. You said this is your termless surrender. You're with the RCM, the coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. We're not coalition appointed. We're just, we just try to help people. You're the RCM. You represent the Moralist International, the enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, Le Parti Communiste dans ce monde. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <laughs> Rene, the royalist on the coast, said. Communards signed the Revachalian instrument of surrender. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? If the party had surrendered, then it would not be the party. That's insane. You're insane. Radio shows, speed racing, sporting goods, none of it is real. So you're a communist soldier from the communist army? No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not the army. Understood. Like you belong to the moralist party. I have another qu serious question for you. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. What have you been using this gun for? I've used it for killing people. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. All right, fair. You want a moralist euphemism? 
defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. Okay, guys, all you gotta say. Interesting. During or after the war? There is no after the war. Ooh. Class war is never over. So is continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. This is it. You can feel it. Like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while. <gasps> but what? But this is what you live for. This is the shit. The shit. The great serotonin jackpot. Ooh. Thank you, electrochemistry. The solution. Go in straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. Yeah, he wants responsibility. <clears throat> so you're saying you killed people after active fighting stop. What did I just say? Keeps shaking his head erratically suddenly. He brushes something out of his eye. What did I just tell you? Don't drop the ball now. That wasn't drop the ball. I just, I needed to reiterate. I'm a cop. Um, I know you want to tell me. Have you killed anyone with that gun in the last week or two? I don't want to tell you anything, you grotesque murderer. All right, man. And why? Did you think that was a good idea? Don't listen to me. I'm wrong all the time. Don't listen to me. I'm wrong all the time. Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel? Of the security contractor, Cornell? The who now? He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it, sire. He heard you. So I said, uh, the Cornell dude. <laughs> he heard you. He wants to hear you say it again. The fascist death squad who took a bullet in the mouth of the night of March 4th. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? The lieutenant takes a sad step toward him. I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachol. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Come on, what am I forgetting? No, let's do it. Um, we've done the ballistics. The shot came from this island. I saw you poking around there, looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascies. Did you like the view? You had direct visibility. They are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follower to use. And you had a long range rifle in your possession. You've been here a long time, Mr. Dras. Too long. You clearly need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. He's practically admitting to it. Dead fascists, for fascists, done his part. Just one thing remains unclear. The rifle does not seem to have a scope. You said fascist. You're admitting you killed him. Well, it's the best uninterrupted line of sight into the window in all of Martinez. Because it's a sniper's nest, you stupid fuck. Radio Gosh is right. You have worms in your brain. 
Thank you. Another sudden twitch. Then one more in his right eye. Almost. He almost burst out there. Keep piling arguments. Anything. I don't need your cooperation. I've got this. <laughs> Not a lot of guns around that use military grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun. Not like your little musketeer pistol. I've seen you prance around with that. Jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons? <laughs> Going against automatic rifles with these toy guns. Of course you got those boys killed. Damn, he saw you. He's watched it happen. He would have a good view of the tribunal from here. It's not just empty boasting. Stop changing the subject. We have the murder weapon. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? You think we have the murder? You think we have the murder weapon? 4.46 jacketed ammunition. Modified for range. We have it. This is it. Calling it. We have the murder weapon. Good. This feels good, doesn't it? Tearing things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Find the murder weapon. Murder. The old man does not say more. He just glances into the reeds and then twitches once more. This pushed him, but not enough. Just come, a little more. Come on, what am I forgetting? Hit yourself on the side of the head. Wait, here it comes. Oh! The goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clasio's roof. Oh, yes. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. And Maybells on Clasio's balcony. Maybell's behind the victim. Ooh! Oh, I'm so smart that I looked at the Maybell's. Maybell's behind the victim's window. I saw them growing here. Damn Maybell's. The whole island is turning white with them. So many this year, too. The spring is coming. No. It's already here. Wash the filth away. I haven't seen these flowers anywhere else in Martinez. Only here. They blossom on the islands before. We fertilized them with our blood. Azorexion was snow white in May before they ruined it. Damn straight. The coast, too, before they piled their containers on top of it, filled with broken, useless trash for fat fingered bourgeois children to play with. Uh, I haven't seen these flowers. Anywhere else in Martinez. Okay. A young woman called Classier. Ring any bells? Flowers like these were behind her window. Classier. He knows her, but hadn't heard the name. Yes, Classier. You hadn't heard her name, had you? My ears don't reach the city. You know her, right? She had intimate relations with the victim. The Merc. With the victim. He turns his sight from the whitening field of flowers and falls silent. Then the muscles in his jaw twitch and spasm. You know who he was. A coalition trained murderer. Armored and armed. He wasn't human. The blunt end of a hammer. Dripping with blood. Sorry, I keep moving my mic. That's what that adjustment noise is. Uh, he was a rapist. I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. Beating us to the ground. Moaning with joy. You hounds get so thorough when a company trained killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years. You know, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Hmm, okay. Got your attention. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. This is it. Shot him. Shot him. Say shot him, not killed him. So you shot him. Oh, the inhumanity. One paramilitary less in Revachal. 
you can almost see him squeeze a tear out of his eye. His fists begin to tremble from the anger. The lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. I hold my breath. I have them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them. In phase. And I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. He begins to smile. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death. And that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in her. Then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. Oh, I'm a fascist now. Okay. And so they did. Hey, upgrade. Mr. Dross. Are you aware you're confessing to murder? Lieutenant asks after a second of silence. Yes. I have four level up points, and I don't know what to dump them in. Yes. A single word is all he gives. And you were looking at them? The victim and a young woman having sex? Through the scope of your rifle that night? Before you shot him? The lieutenant takes out his notebook. Slowly, very slowly. The old man nods. Why? Uh, Kip, what do you mean why, huh? Because that's what they were doing. <laughs> the motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. The lieutenant's preparing the ground. Uh-oh, he's fucking throwing it up for the alley-oop. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. Why were you looking at them that night? I'm always looking. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. And if you don't like it? You pull the trigger. Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. He will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types never do. Exploit it. You've got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. Start with when he first saw him. It will give him a chance to ramble. Start with when he first saw him. When did you first see the deceased? Three weeks ago, when the rich hag came in on her galley. Her honor guard came in tow. Joyce. He means Joyce. By that you mean Joyce Messier, the Wild Pines rep. Wrinkled up whore. Whore, good strong word. I often use it myself. Yes, old fashioned. Kim. <clears throat> Moving on, the victim arrives some time after her. They moved into a deserted apartment above the roundabout. Radio equipment out for all to see. Reactionary radio playing. Sloppy, drunk. I've seen their kind during the landing. Those occidental and messed phalanx weren't conscripts. Boys like us. They were whites. All they know is to destroy and hurt. Whites. Barely alive. They like to kill while they're on their drugs. After the landing, in the burning years, I would take shots at them. End them. The worst one, if I had a bullet to spare. I could see they've returned now to show their real face. The face they don't dare show their bourgeois voters back on Mundi with their families mm. in polyester clothes. What specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. So you were jealous. Jealousy is a reactionary concept. 
I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. For him to stop reacting to stimuli, to be broken off from the world, cordoned into darkness. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second, writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. He wants to see her covered in blood, to punish her. How long have you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez, I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then, just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast? What was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. What do you think she hid there? Her passport and ticket to be here. That's... <coughs> that's accurate. To Kashev route. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. Some kind of hidden container on the coast? You looked into it? Yes, after she'd gone. It was a submersible. Well made, actually. Sloppy. We should have gotten her to tell us about this. Did you take the documents? No. I put them back. Why would I take them? I'm not going to foul. No. I mean... Moving on. Did you continue watching her after this? I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Revachal's the cloaker of capital now. All the bagmen and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook? From the documents? She had different color hair on the photo. And glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. And you could see her bruises through the scope of a rifle. You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. How did you get close enough to see those bruises, Mr. Draw? I have my ways. What ways? Tell me. Not in this lifetime, do I? <laughs> this one's gone. Make up somehow. You're a bad detective. Lazy. Thank you. Bad. My little thing missed, and I drowned in anxiety. Rightly so. Fix this now. Push on. You wanted to punish her, so you killed him. She practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. I'm not like that. I don't think like that. No one gives a shit what you think. You and your cronies kill ten working class men a day. I've heard the statistics on Channel 8. You had feelings for that woman. There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. There have been others? Yes. Over the years. It's not unproletarian to feel something. 
Is that why you left the dried flowers behind her window? No. He starts to shake his head again, a sunflower and a withered stalk. Why then? I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor, like she does sometimes. The day after I killed him. And you brought her Maybells. Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. You wanted to console her? Maybe. I have these holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. In the silence. The lieutenant draws a line in his notes. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him. It was about her. Her. He repeats, staring at the ashes, then the reeds. There's a twitch in the corner of his eye. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. Where is she, that classier? I haven't seen her there for days. Safe and sound, sire. Surely you have not misplaced the witness. I'm not at liberty to say. I know she's gone. Locked up. Or on the run. She kept staring into the scope, you know. In the end, this last week, at the fort. Like she knew. Like she knew I was here. It doesn't matter. That would be the, uh, the string that she left us. He knew she knows. She was looking at the island, figuring it out. Day by day, cigarette by cigarette. We could get more. We've got him talking. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years. You could get more out of him. He likes talking. And all he has left to do is talk. Enough. Take him in. Bend his arms behind his back and end this. Says his body language. For a 60-year-old man with stomach trouble, who spent his entire life alone on an uninhabited island. He seems surprisingly fit. That's it? He's prone to erratic hand gestures and clearly malnourished. But that's it. You can see no more by looking at his slouched frame. The moment passes and you say... It won't let me redo it. Okay. Physical instrument said enough. Take him in. Bend his arms behind his back. Yeah, I mean. Why not? Why not talk to him some more? Let's go. Uh, been looking at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic comedy. Draggies. Prostitutes. And rentiers. A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again. It straightens his back. The familiar putt, putt, putt of hatred. More specifically. Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez... Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world listening to race-themed radio shows in the ruins, in their lorries. Pump full of steroids and radio revachal 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mr. Clare. Yes, the fly lava in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer, on the town square, to spit on the working class. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachal at least pretends to rebuild 
These people still live in ruins. In tents, like animals. Like those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. Nod. The worst of them is the blood drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cop parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist <laughs> ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Quayamoran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. Say nothing. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. Hmm. Now, I have some questions about this. We did good when we pushed him under the horse car. Until, in the 30s, those disco whores. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. There was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people might be worth investigating. Disco whores. Whores. There was something about the statue on the roundabout. And syphilis? Syphilis is a disease Philip preferred contracted in a whorehouse. The statue is an abomination. Abomination. The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander trillions on sparkling wine, cocainum, and monuments of himself. His son... Philip the Fourth, the insane, contracted syphilis in the womb. That is technically possible, although Philip the Third was not actually syphilitic. He was just a man. And he still went on to govern Revachol for 25 years. We lost two million lives toppling that mode of government. And those grotesque statues, too. Hundreds of them. <sighs> but it's still there. What a keen remark. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Do you know why? Um. <laughs> because the king is holy and the statues are indestructible. No. Cynical design cockroaches like you erected a new, ironic version of it. We tore it down with honest, working-class plastic explosives. But there it is again, grinning. Art is a bourgeois establishment. It's an affront to humanity. Every gallery should be bulldozed, and the artists should all be given 30 years of hard labor in Yekokata. Wait, it suddenly strikes you. Perhaps it was not as it seemed. Actually, it was not deconstructed so much as captured in the moment of the explosion. What are you talking about? It's not a monument to Philippe III anymore. It's a monument to the monument of Philippe III exploding. What is this madness? Yeah, that's why it's separated. The lieutenant, too, has cocked his head and is looking at you with a strange expression. It's not madness. It's a monument to what you did to your program of destatuting Revishaw. So you're saying it's a communist monument now? Not only. Yes, and furthermore, the design bureau uh the design bureau people are probably left wing too. They often are. 
We did always have the prettiest posters. Maybe you're right. That is how dialectics work. But understand this, art is still a bourgeois institution. <coughs> and they all should still be sent to Yekokata. Typical far-left treachery, repress repressing your own people. It is commonplace to relocate the workforce according to the needs of the land. All nations do it. It's called settlement. Browbeating from the bourgeois art fascists. That's it for the statue then. Tell me, Mr. Joe. The fat union man let them put it there. Corrupt as he is. Probably got a fat check for it too. Shared with the law. Accusations of corruption. Push them aside with a sharp change of topic, officer. Put the heat on him. By the cock parade in his kind of uh, uniform, you mean Renee? Every fucking <laughs> oh, Renee. For 34 years. Throwing that ball. One ball against the other. I always loathe that game. That is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. Royalist ghouls played like it was life itself. Click, clack across the water each day and that uniform like a parrot plumage I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race a patank maniac race traitor oh well, let's back off before you get too agitated what is there to be agitated about I'm glad Generally we talked about this glad. it's all gone <clears throat> Yosef Lulianovich Droves. You're under arrest for the murder of the Cornell Colonel here at Martinez. What? But you said I would be taken to the... The sum of all the erratic movements, fidgeting, and mood swings he's been exhibiting. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... Kim, he's afraid. No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He looks at the reeds, eyes submerged in growing terror. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Uh oh. Let's do it. You thought you heard something, nope. but it's just the reeds. Maybe we could all fit in there. <laughs> Does it have room for three? Not really. We could escort him to the pier, then either one of us can take him inland while the other stays here. But. But then, who watches him? While you're coming back here. Who watches him there while I come back for you? You come back for me? How about I go and send a boat back for you? What is this farce? This is a fucking farce. I can't... Lillian, you could ask her maybe. Maybe I can just ask the net picker to watch him? This is no harmless old man. This fucking world. This world. What is this? Below the confusion and rage, if it is jamais vu, like yours, the thought passes. More pressing matters take its place. That wasn't voice acted for some reason. No, listen. Listen now. I could come back for you once I've taken Tim to the precinct. We could all fit in the little boat. Let's try that first. Actually, no. I could come back for you. Okay, how about I take him to the precinct and you wait on the island? Maybe you're right, okay. This world. What are you talking about? Shut up. Is this us? The wind is cold from the east. To the west. Your skin is crawling suddenly. It's that wind, dog. It's fucking freezing. S 
stick bugs. <gasps> it's the reeds. Um. A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb. A fucking phasmid. They're. Mmm. 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 Oh, I. I did not see that one coming. I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, he's going to admit to it. I did not think that we were going to see a fucking Phasmin. Uh, what is that? Point to it. What are you talking about? I don't know what the hell that is. There's nothing there. Uh, look at it. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small eyes. Oh, hell no. It's crawling towards me. Oh, hell no. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand rise instinctively. There it is. I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Holy shit, Kim. Can you see it? I can see it. Four simple words. Thank God. If you can see, then you're not insane. But that means... It's really there, spinning slowly, in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. Bro, what the fuck? The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. This is the instant Indian phasmid. It is. Kim, I was right. That man was right. And we, you, oof, ooh, Kim, ooh. You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a piece of milled aluminium. He begins to pull it open extremely carefully. It's the camera. No, the flash will scare the creature off. Warn him now. Hey, the flash is loud. You won't. It won't like that. We need a photo. No one will believe us. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. Stop. Let me approach it first. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. He's letting his pride get in the way. You see the phasmid turn to him. Its mandible antennae reaching out. Its motions are quick. Just listen to sudden. me. Just listen to me, Kim. Shh. Okay. The spindly mechanism turns I'm approach it carefully. back to you. Its antennae taking their measure of the air. Slowly. Nice. Ooh. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two Ooh. small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. It's smelling me. Maybe it is real. The feral moon. About now, he is ready to believe in anything. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. Hello, I'm, I'm a hairy. I, I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence 
comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tippy toes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. Let your heels drop back into solid ground. The invertebrate stops, raising its side-like arms until oh, it its points. tiny head, formed from the fused plates around its mouth. For a second, the effigy is frozen. Then it nudges back into motion with a click. Tell me, what are you doing? Spoke to the hangman, and I know of the Parthen Parthenogenesis. I exist. I am talking to it. I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. It's a wonder bar. Yes, holy is the Lord of hosts, and all the earth is filled with his glory. Now, I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half naked images. A kind of darkness being intruded upon. Transient, dim, moist. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals. And internal sensations. A swarm of sound. Tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearm. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an era funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. I'm glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you. It's all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. Even when you're sleepy, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck, with eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great, mute empathy for you. It was very disorienting at first, but I'm keeping my shit together. It must be incredibly hard. The orthopods are in silence and meaningless all of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. Bud from you, banner-like, blossom from you and carry you apart in a sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. I am a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? I was born to detect you. Yes. No one detected me for such a long, long time. For thousands of years. I did it. Out of sight. Trapped myself in greenery. This is my masterpiece. No one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand years. Is this a dream? What is happening? No. You are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from? All this around us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. We need to know. Perhaps it's sent to us by God? I think we should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. Yum yum. Wait, so... So you look like a reed, and you eat reeds? Yes, they don't mind. Have you accidentally eaten another reed, Phasmin? I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter, and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. What exactly are you? I am an unknown species of the order Phantasmodia, and 
pandemic to the Insolentia Isoma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, combing myself, unfolding at night to play with trash cans and boys. No one unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Sasserin. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed here in through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions, until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolsho, district of Martinez, March 51. Yep. I wonder I wonder who did that. That's insane. No. You are. The moral of our encounter is I am a relatively medium life form. While it is you who are a total extreme madness. A volatile senior nerve system ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. I don't have that kind of power. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. Also, very, very dangerous. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. Okay, good. Forget it. No. What's going on? I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? No, I told you what it's about. Our fate. I think we should take the picture. And then you should back away from the unstudied species. I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No. There is one more. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the kindest. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman, turn from the ruin. That turn woman? Go forward. For freedom. What woman? You cannot lie to me. Behind you, it smells of fires. So awfully far you were prepared to go in her presence. And it. I will try. She was held on earth. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Okay, Kim, take the picture. Okay. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts wow. the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright oh. light. Head turned. It wouldn't let me take a screenshot. Hypnotized by the flash, it stands frozen before you. Let me see if I can take a screenshot. There we go. That is fucking cool. I got it. You hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develops on the photo paper in his hand. A polychrome ghost of white streaks against the reeds in the sky and you as a shadow before it. Immortalized. Slowly reach out and touch the creature's whisker. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. 
Look at your finger. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. Carefully pet its scythe like forearm. That's not. <laughs> we got it. A shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. And now it just disappears. Gone. Wow. We did and it. Just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water and something under it. In the place it stood, bobbing there among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only, I've never seen anything like that in my life. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? What now? He put his hands in the ash. It's dirty and black. He, I, I don't think he can believe that either. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. <laughs> Fucking, he's losing it. <gasps> a rifle scope. A common 30 millimeter sniper skill attachable to almost any bolt action 446 caliber. It uses an older style non dotted range finding reticle. Seaweed is still stuck on the lens and it suffered water damage from its time in Phasmid's dowry. Hmm, interesting. There it is, a brave little army in your pocket. The first smoke Pull one out. You picked the Light best it up. One. Get a load of the lighter's mm -hmm. dark green disposable plastic. Safety's off. In your case, repercussions. It will help you concentrate. I actually this. don't care about this. That thick, warm smoke gets sucked down into your lungs. Immediately, you feel a warm nostalgia fill Increases your, your head, intelligence, okay. Body and soul. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a cigarettes button. Nice. I just needed to use stuff in my inventory, you know? Wow, okay, let's check on this man. <clears throat> what is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. Uh, sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See? Mr. Dallas? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking. I'm going to wave my hand in front. Of, oh, I'm going to touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes. He did away. not like that. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is this solves our transportation problem. Doesn't it, Mr. Dallas? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. Uh, what has happened to this man? Old age and shock. I think it's a phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? You couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reeds for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right. <laughs> Something is out for you. No response. Maybe this is how the phasmid has stayed hidden all these years. Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief, and hands not credible. 
but anyone who spends a long time with it. Yes, you forget it's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The, the, the... the doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advance for a nurse. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it is in, how much of it how much of it in its company? He did seem distressed wow. when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place and the insect maybe. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. No one would believe you without it. We found some things in the Phasma's nest, Mr. Joes. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps mm. you should. I'm going to show him the detached scope. I... I lost. You lost it, Mr. Droz? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. <laughs> With the help of a magpie phasmid. This site is a T9, Mr. Droz. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Joes. The plastic cape flaps around Hang his tight. face. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. Yes? You seem to be following Excuse me. Yep, you no have uh, I hope you don't take... They say it's... Yes. But containers. I don't know. Containers. Okay. The return. Here we go. Use the boat to return to the mainland. Yep. That was insane. The phasmids. We found a phasmid. That guy wasn't full of shit. The insulindian phasmid. ICM. This feels familiar somehow. Kim, what is the ICM? Insulindian Citizens Militia. It's the official name of the Communal Army. The black and white army of the revolution. Sounds an awful lot like. RCM sounds like the RCM. Revachal Citizens Militia. It does. The RCM may descend from the ICM. It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revachal West was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. It's going to be hard to say them. Carrying around all that weight on a busted crutch is making you... Panic. It's a little embarrassing if anyone know. Maybe we need a rebrand. No one remembers the ICM. The connotation is less important each year. A white star. Point to the star on the label. No. An upside down star. With its horns in the sky. The symbol of the commune. Are those spec stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of Looks old. Linda, What's it still doing here? After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Gifreta. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. Finish. Thought. Hmm, I didn't look at that at this on my first pass. Yeah, okay. Unimportant. I didn't, I didn't see it on the first run through. That's the chain shells off in the ocean. All right, Kim, you ready? Let's get in the boat. Let's smoke one more for the road. It won't let me smoke again. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's. We are done here. He says, adjusting his glasses as he looks out over the water. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. Yeah, did you not see that phasmid? But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Look. 
broke what the tide brought to him. Yes. Ooh. Harry, you're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just Hey, seen. you guys want to hear some shit? This is the man with sunglasses from the whirling in rags. But where are his sunglasses? Wait, you're the man with sunglasses. That's right. And you're bleeding. Forget about this. There's a giant. We're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. No one else seems to be bothered by the bleeding. Bothered by it? Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. Oh, fuck it. Let's not get into that. Who are you people? Hello, I'm Trent Heilerstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar. And this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Special consultant Trent Heidelstam, but our officer Judith Mino. Hi. Hmm. The weird painted woman. I don't know why it's painted like that. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisoragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. He had suddenly regaining his confidence. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. Thank you, Lieutenant. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. She says warmly, flashing the lieutenant the tiniest of smiles. Letting the lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. What's it, what is this about? Ari, we want to help you. Taunt, I believe this is where you come in? This is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that, but it was beyond idiotic. You should never address her using those words again. Got it. Um... I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trump, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit, kid. What an interest in Monica. Where, ha <laughs> where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. Okay, so you let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson. It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? Hmm. <laughs> said all those things? I'm not like that anymore. Why didn't you detect or die then? Oh, you think it was cool you saying that? Aesthetic somehow? You were crying when we got here. Breaking things. You said we were going into the abyss. None of us wanted to see the abyss. So we fucked off. You, not to the female officer. Uh, like you told us to. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you before. It's okay. I didn't come here to gloat or to fool you. Neither did he, actually. We're just worried. That's right. Worried. I'm always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work, or when you do about... But stink. stink. You're a worry fest. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Even Special Consultant Backpedal is worried about you. Everyone worries. Instead of working. So, Trant Heidelstam. Turns out to be con Special Consultant Trant Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I never said I wasn't Trant Heidelstam. So, what was up with the kid, then? Mikael? Mikael is my son. Oh, yeah, what was up with all the interesting history? Spying on me? No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. Cool. And Mikael wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. So what are you special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. Partial psychotraumatic amnesia? He's here to see if you're insane. He's smart. 
Let's move on. How did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Uh, I save his establishment and he betrays me. Strange. He didn't mention that. In fact, the establishment didn't look saved at all. There was a giant I.O. graffito in front of the building. It was on fire. Yeah, I lit it on fire. It was a poetic gesture. Gosh darn it. I knew it. Didn't I tell you, Trump? I told you it was a shit kid. The line is from Lu Jiatun's Mirova 82, isn't it? About girl child communism, the titular returning character to ghost the apparition of... Good choice, Harry. He is correct. It was the Serayese poet, Lu Jiatun, who, in the 50s of the last century, composed... Don't encourage him, Trump. Okay. You're not even the man with the sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. Guilty as charged. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. Yeah, because you had a sweet do on, and now you don't. Ha, <laughs> burn. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. If you hadn't been so sarcastic, I would have realized I knew you. I'm clinically depressed, Harry. Sorry if I wasn't in the mood to butter you up after you told us to fuck off. And I don't like being lied to. I didn't lie to you. No one lies to you. You were so fucked up on booze you couldn't recognize your own partner. None of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, Pell, and so on. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him, and I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? I drank so much I lost my memory and now I'm slowly recovering it. He is. He's getting better. And I can confirm that he drank a lot of alcohol prior to it happening. I believe he drank. People do that, especially this one. What they don't do is forget their whole life because of drinking. But Detective Big Man, he has blanked out before. Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. The other when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. The two cases in your ledger. The unsolvable case and the next world mural. Those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here's my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. Okay, Trump, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. Cool, I'm thanks. Glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. I'm ready to lead again. No one even mentioned that. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the body? Or do we need to get him on a disability pension? What now? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Just stand there? Yeah, yeah. 
just stand there. It's cool. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Lie. Just bide your time. Ask something. Then lie. Hold on. In the ocean? Yes, in the ocean, under the sea. Our work vehicle with fishing clams and other sea shit. It was stolen by Jacob Er. Jacob Er. The famous tip top turn A driver? I know who Jacob Erb is. I wanted to give you a chance to stop fucking me. How naive of me. You drove a 45,000 real police vehicle into the ocean. What did I expect? It doesn't matter. <sighs> your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. Hmm. <laughs> I got my badge right here. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Aha! I failed all of these before, so clearly I gotta make this one. Plus one, you're proficient in catching small objects. Boom, I caught it. Finally. Not today, badge. Behold, my badge. And your gun. As if having your badge and gun. What is it with all these material objects? Ah, my gun is right here. Show him the VDA 9mm. And he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a berm, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. Oh, man. I can't believe I started drinking because I th I knew that if I didn't drink the whole game, it would probably be lead to something pretty cool in the end. I don't lose my gun. I have my gun. We're not talking about the fucking gun anymore. We're talking about the vapor. This is so unfair. He knows you have the gun, and still he's punished. So what? I've had a little drink. A little drink? You smell like a corpse. Oh, I haven't drank today. And I can barely breathe. You smell like shit. You let a suspect escape, Harry. Class year is something. Because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. We've read the reports. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. What? Class issue? Some kind of spy from... Oh, oh, not... Not taking her in was the right thing to do. She gave it... Oh, no. Oh, look at this. <laughs> That's just a small detail in a huge case you know nothing about. Sure. If it's part of your master plan, let's not even get into the other suspect who also escaped. Another detail? Or the fact that you're ever Claire's little peony now. Do you uh -huh. don't know what for him? That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the seven people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. Hey, like Kim said, I didn't shoot anybody. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois could between them and the locals. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. I also solved the case. It solved all of it. Detective, it's better if I do that. Ah, oh, fine. All right. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> he thinks of apologizing, but decides against it. He's got an ego. You've spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? Um... Case? On Lieutenant Euphreteur Dubois. Well, the drinking, the last gun, also losing his badge, that's all true. And he's been drinking on the job. The man sighs deeply. Hey, I had one, two little sips. One of the seven days. Then there's the superstardom. He likes to, from time to time, allude to being a superstar, <laughs> low official. At first I thought it was a joke, but now I'm not so sure. He says disco about 20 times a day. Damn straight. It's odd, especially in light of his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a hustler. He recently commissioned a monument to his own grind in the middle of the roundabout, which is just other still. 
He is also a full-blown fascist, an ultra-nationalist, woman-hater, and more than a little racist. Which, I guess, goes well with the grind. Absolutely. I do not know, but he is vocal about both beliefs. Man, I just, I just do be talking though, Kim. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, and the constant smoking everywhere, all the time. But despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I have seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him anything, and he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped working on the case. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke. But it was good. Which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vikmar, was a violent effort. He really sang his heart out. Okay, he did something. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species? A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian phasmid. He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows, flapping the glossy rectangle in his hand. You hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. <clears throat> In the words of the wise, boom shakalaka, motherfucker. Fucking hell is that? Is this somehow connected to the case? The killer did not seem to be aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yes, the phasmid may have contributed to his mental state in some way, over the years. So it is connected. I must say this is absolutely extraordinary. It's, I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. <clears throat> There's also a dead man on the boardwalk. A uh, missing person I found. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. Drunk. How did you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Oh, yeah. So nice of you to remember me. Still, good work with the missing person, detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. The killer, Lilianovich Droz. We have a strong motive for him. Lilianovich? A revolutionary matronym. A revolutionary matronym? Now, the custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Prasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronym derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lilian, his Lilian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachov. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Mm. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Yeah. Of course, excuse me, I just thought it was noteworthy. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. He wasn't quite sure of the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. No, uh, he killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. Or he killed the mercenary, hoping to start a war between the company and the union. Oh yeah, remember. It was an act of jealousy. He just kind of folded when I brought that up. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man. To have been hiding for 50 years. Like 70 something. A strange psychosexual fascination. The result of spending all this time in solitude on the islands of this bay. And trauma too. 
He himself gave a political reason. In his mind, he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have a sniper's nest with full view of the room in which the mercenary died, right on the island, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. It's more than that. A perfect folding mechanism, like the Phasmin. Perfect folding mechanism? Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. It is bad. Even you can smell it. Also looked into the mystery of the doomed commercial area. I don't know what a doomed commercial area is. Rue de St. Gislaine 10, a commercial building where all businesses go bankrupt. I looked into it. Why? That's not what you were supposed to do here. Oh, but I still looked into it, didn't I? There was a possible witness in there, and it was close to the crime scene. He was just chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. It was okay. Of course. Call it community outreach, uh, right? I wish I would have solved the church. I just didn't have time. Dodged the bullet there. For a moment, it seemed like you were just wasting time. Also, the phasma is female. The reeds are its nest. Female? What makes you think so? Uh, I heard its voice. You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female. And the nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. I think it reproduces by par parthiogenesis. As in cloning itself? <laughs> what makes you think so? Observation. Interesting. Then it is especially vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the entire species. We're probably talking conservation efforts here. Uh, it gathered items in its nest, a helmet and a scope. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting males. Bowers are built by males of the species who can't afford colorful mating displays physically. This one was plain colored. I still think it was a female. Of course, as I said, I'm only guessing. I didn't see it. it must be robust if it can move a whole helmet with its limbs. It had mandibles that looked like hair and it was completely white on the inside. Yes, but also reed colored, beige and brown, a little green. On the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR value of this is exceptional. Carp discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the Insulindian phasmid. No, no, that's too much. This would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been having. Absolutely. This is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This is science, news, and human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it, you're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. Quit while you're ahead, or no. So what do you say, wanna take this hot shit back? I don't want to, but you discovered the new species and solved the murder. So I have to, Jude. Honestly, anything that ends this trial is okay with me. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Wait, I have a few questions before we go about who I am. The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. Precinct 41, what kind of station is it? Us. We're the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? We're the bad guys. No one likes us. That's not true. Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You are just understaffed. And everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Ah. Soap. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is an understaffed station and the district is too big. Which is why we need to... Get back to it. We left Torson and McLean to run the sea wing. It's not good. Okay, so I work in the bloody murder station. Okay. It's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there, hard, every day. 
Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Rivershall. Forburg, technically, but uh, it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only as us. The press will blow up. <coughs> Jamrock is lucky to have you. Nice. And it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, I meant investigate. Come work in Precinct 41. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's at a loss. Flattered? Juliet no Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. I would have to tie things up in Boom. GRIH first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbor. Lieutenant turns very serious all of a sudden. And we also have a huge caseload, you know. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. Nice. Recru recruit Detective Kim Kitsuragi. He's really considering it. Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. Ha, what? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... But before? Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Cohon. Nice. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... That does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth, your inexplicable facial hair. The collection of fallen sportswear I've amassed. Some of your more <clears throat> old school wording choices. Your posture, even. The constant stretches. Also, this guy. Just everything about When was this? When was I a gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s. You've really let yourself go since then. You said in Kiran? I was a gym teacher there? Yes, you taught gym in Kuhn. I believe that's the term. Taught gym at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboards. Kuro is just east of Jack. Don't care. School. Harry, your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you are so jovi. Why did I join the RCM then? The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. Uh, but I am what I am. Did you not see what I just did? You. Every morning. Walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. Nice. An ocean full of hope. Okay, I see now. I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest to God gym teacher. Kim's always like, hey, hold up. I gotta, I gotta catch up. Hold up. <laughs> Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. Some chick who? Dora something. Dora England. Yeah, you mentioned her name. Not Dora Dubois. Wait, Dora England? Something like that. Half Vasa. Vasa is where beautifully and impossibly blonde people come from. So we weren't even married. No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. When was this? God, I don't know. Six years ago. She was way before my time. The six years? Yeah. Or seven. You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and Dora Ingelon really tore you a new one. A big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable. Are you seriously using this moment to assert male privilege? He is very passionate about this. Okay, you're right. She was extremely fuckable, Harry. Gorgeous. A gorgeous bourgeois woman. Way fierce. Like a welkin, basically. Snow welkin. Blonde welkin. I've only seen a picture. But it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Hmm. Look, 
The sun is about to go down. It's time to go. I think she talked in the Academy des Arts, east of the river, way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. In other words, he's heard enough about this. Hey, am I a dirty cop working for the puta madre? No. No, because the suspects seem to think... You're too unstable to work for my boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of it. The Phasmin, I need to tell Lena about this. ASAP. Who is Lena? A cryptozoologist. She lives in Jamrock. She told me about this Phasmin. Well, good luck finding her once we get back. She and her husband were conducting the search for the Phasmin. It's their discovery, in fact. I'm sure we'll find them. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. She is going to be over the moon. I'm ready, and it says end for the first time. Good. Fuck it, let's go. Tron brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Under the afternoon sky, the great district hums. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls, and chimney stacks. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41, to Boogie Street, forking into the snow-swept horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de Saint-Jerome, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Torson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Vicmere? Yes. Dubois? Yes. Really? Nick Scottleep looks up from the list. I hear he's quite unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Ptolemy Price points his pen at the doctor. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through, and when he does, he'll side with Remishon. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minna, of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? You got it, Kim. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. I forgot what a normal looking lorry looks like. Look, I got my uniform on, dude. Let's go give him a handshake. Nice. We did it. Damn fine detective, I would think. Uh, uh, uh. Listen to that. That's credit music I hear. That's the credit music. God damn. That was Disco Elysium. Uh, I had fun. I thought the game was fantastic. Like... There's, it's crazy how much I truly, truly missed in the game and how I could run through the game a second time and make completely different decisions and get a completely different outcome and I would still miss a serious chunk of the game. Well, that was fantastic. That was, that was a really good game. I really enjoyed that. So I'm gonna let the, uh, I'm gonna let the credits roll to the end. And that's how this video is going to end off. This game gets a lot of high praise. I'm probably going to recommend it for literally anybody. That's a lot of uh, that's a lot of exposition at the end. I think we're going on almost two hours of just straight talking. But it's worth it. Like, 
some episodes I tried to end early because I was like, I'm sick and tired of playing this game right now. So we're stopping at 20 minutes, you know? Not that. I was like, I'm committed. This is fire. Like, that two hours kind of went faster than some movies, you know? You know when you watch a movie and it just feels like it never ends? Kind of sucks this one had to end. With that being said, this was Disco Elysium. Check out my other Let's Plays. I have fun in those ones too. I promise. Uh, the unfortunate thing about ending this one is now i got to find something else to play. Because I kind of put everything else on the back burner to finish this one. I think this is episode 42? Let me double check my channel. I have it pulled up right here. This is episode 43. One off. Yeah, it's crazy that we're going from the tribunal straight to the end of the game. But I like it. I think that's the way it's meant to be. I'm shocked about the Phasmid. That, that still blows my mind. Did not see that coming. I mean, the writing should have been on the wall. Why focus on something the entire game if it doesn't exist? All right, with that, that was Disco Elysium. Take care.